This is Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're on a bit of a modified road show. We're in the Long Beach area today. Normally we taped at Cal State Long Beach, but the facility was not available. So we're in Signal Hill, which is a city surrounded uh, by Long Beach. And we're joined today by Janet Wynn. She is a member of the California State Senate. Thank you for joining Thank us. You, we Brad. appreciate it. I want to speak with you about a tragic incident that occurred in February of 2015. A young woman from Orange County, her name uh, was Erica Alonzo. Why don't you tell us a bit about Erica? Um, thank you, Brad. Sure. Um, and, you know, it's great to see you uh, back yes, in Southern California. Exactly, of course. We uh, see each other in Sacramento as well. Yes, yes. Right. And, and thank you for, for, for mm. giving me an opportunity to be part of this. Um, so Erica Alonzo was Found, her body was found near the Ortega Freeway mm -hmm. in, uh, San, Juan in, in San Juan Capistrano, mm -hmm. um, and you know her f um, her she she went missing during Valentine's Day right. for several months, um, and then they found her body. And it was dumped there, and unfortunately, the current law doesn't allow the judge to have discretion to either say this is going to be a misdemeanor or a felony, and the current law also. You know, um, especially when it when it's deemed that it's not a murder, right. um, a homicide, that um, her death was was based on you know um, self inflicted. It appears self inflicted. I yes. mean, from what we know, this was not technically a suicide. Yeah. But it appears it was likely an overdose of some form, and as I understand it. Um, there was no necessary criminal wrongdoing as it related to her passing, yes. but it was the dumping of the body by some of her friends. Instead of just calling the authorities or calling her family, they found her, she had uh, died, and they just... Exactly, and, and that's the thing is that when, when you intentionally dump, remove a body right. from a crime scene right. so that to hide whatever has happened, right. they should be accountable. And that's what we're and that's looking at. that's what we're yeah. looking at. And so I want to get a sense, though, how did you, Senator Wynn, find out about this story? Yeah. Because it's a tragic one, and it's an example of how constituents can matter. Oh, absolutely. Right. Um, you know, we, we read the article of, you know, of, of, of what happened to her. Right. Uh, but it's one of those where it's another article that we read, unfortunately. And it, and it also wasn't in my district. Right. However, her father, Mr. Alonzo, right. was very passionate. He kept on calling our office, wanting us to, you know, look at this, wanting us to right. um, talk to him. And so my staff finally did. Okay. Met with Mr. Alonzo, and um, he also had rallies, Lots of rallies in my district. Okay, so that's uh, that's where you so, get implicated. You know, because I guess he was rallying in front of the Santa Ana County Building. Yes, Orange County. Yes, uh, um, he he was rallying in front of the the mm. city, the city oh, of Santa Ana, yeah, okay. the police department, and also City Hall. Interesting. And so, um, and it and it, it attracted a lot of attention because. Mm. All of us who are parents right. don't ever want to be in this situation. Apparently, Ms. Yeah. Alonzo was in her tw 20s, so a young woman, father yeah. is absolutely devastated. Yes. And, and just to add insult to injury, to think that he had to suffer for almost three months, mm -hmm. not knowing what had happened to his daughter, and a, a tragic turn of events, but not a murder, and, and, and so you just like to put her to rest. Yes. And you can't do that. Exactly. When, when you don't know where she is. Yeah. And so. And, 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 and our understands the case, had the judge had the discretion. Right. It wouldn't be, I mean, uh, you know, they have right now current laws, $1,000 fines, like a slap in the right. hand. And so people need to know there's consequences. There's more than just a few months of imprisonment right. or a $1,000 fine. So let's talk about that because as I understand it now, it appears mm -hmm. that the act is a misdemeanor. Yes. And so what you're looking to do, you propose legislation, it's now SB 1088, yes. and you're looking to have it be, I guess we'll call it a wobbler, which is not a pejorative term. Yeah. It can be either a misdemeanor or a felony. And that's giving the judge the discretion. Once he or she reviews the case, he or she then has the discretion mm. to, to choose. Right. Versus today, no matter what, no matter what proof, no matter what um, right. evidence there are, it's just a misdemeanor. So let's talk about the reclassification because, look, 10, 20 years ago, we were turning everything into felonies. You know, now we're in this era where we have prison realignment as a result of a U.S. Supreme Court case which called our prisons cruel and unusual. And so that's put a lot of pressure on the state and counties. 
But on the flip side, we now have Prop 47, which reclassified certain drug possession offenses from felonies to misdemeanors. So maybe the counties do have some room for these types of offenses. I mean, you have cross currents coming at you. Yes. No, there are. There's, I mean, mm. there's definitely going to be a hurdle to try to get this through the right. legislature and onto the governor's desk right. and get him to sign it. Um, I'm just looking at if I was the parent. Right. I mean, I have two young boys. I right. would hate to be in that situation. And I want, if there's clear evidence that this is not a misdemeanor, that there's an intention right. um, of those individuals, they should be accountable. Right. They, because if they can do it once, right. it's yeah. okay to do yeah. it again, no, right? I hear you. It's, and, and so, you know, I, I think the whole prison realignment was a mistake. I think allowing people, you know, Prop 47 to be released early. <laughs> but you it's, know, it's, it's a whole, it's it, not even, it's, it's, it's classification. Yeah, it's, right. it's, it's, it's really has burdened the community mm -hmm. and the local government. But the question becomes, like you said, we need to get this through the legislature. Mm -hmm. You as the senator, have you spoken with friends on the Democratic yeah. side? Are they interested? Because this is one of those types of situations where, you know, it, you kind of wonder what's going on here. Yeah, no, no, this is a type of situation yeah. where, they know, I would assume most people would say it's duh, yeah, right? right? Well it's one stated. of those duh, yeah. you would do it. Right. Uh, but under the circumstances where we are, where we are lessening a lot of the crimes right. or reclassifying them, sure, whatever sure, sure. way, whatever yeah. word you want to use, um, they might have to think twice. Right. We definitely have reached across the aisle. Right. Um, and so we're waiting. It will be going before, you know, several of the committees sure, of course. before it can even get onto the Senate floor. Do you know if Mr. Alonzo will testify? We don't yet. Because that would be powerful. Yes. No, it would be would extremely be powerful. powerful. Um, mm -hmm. We definitely know that since um, the bill was introduced, mm -hmm. um, her the website the family mm. um, uh, created, created or, right. and, and uh -huh. um, on Facebook has got a lot of traction okay. um, and a lot of comments, um, you know, and they're very positive comments and a lot say, you know, thank you to the senator, right. this is the right thing to do, and it's the duh. Right. Uh, I like that. That's, that's a new yeah. expression so for it's, politics. It's, it's kind of the, it, duh, the yeah. duh factor. The, the, the duh moment, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. Um, yeah. and, and so, you know, that's, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, we are reaching out to Mr. Alonzo, right. um, you know, and, and as we move forward, um, if that's possible, that would right. be great, because it would send a, a sure. much stronger statement than coming from me. I want to talk about another tragedy, a tragedy that befell Southern California mm -hmm. on December 2nd in San Bernardino. Uh, Fourteen individuals lost their lives as a result of a terrorist act by radical Islamist terrorists. Um, I did not know this, and I thank you for teaching me this, that after 9-11, uh, there was a law that was passed that provided um, tuition assistance for the survivors of 9-11 victims. You're looking to move that into 2015, The, 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 the families of the victims. The, 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 the family. Yes, I, the I families. misspoke. Yes, Thank the you. The families. Yeah. Um, so uh, after September 11, in New York, mm -hmm. the 3,000 individuals who perished that day, right. their families were given, the, their spouse and the children, right. and they were to go to a state-funded um, college campus mm -hmm. and they have to meet certain requirements sure. in terms of income and etc right. uh, that the state would provide for those families right. um, the children and the spouse uh, we I introduce a bill uh, very similar to New York right. uh, is that you know expect there's one family in this tragedy uh, uh, that had like six or seven children mm -hmm. and he was the the father who Paris right. was the, know, was 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 was, was the only speak. one who worked in the fa in the household. Right. Um, the mom was you know a housewife, right. and and a couple of them are at the age in a few years right. will be going to college. When you come back, I want to hear about what happens with this bill okay. because it is something we'd like to track. Yes. Her name is Janet Wynn. She is a member of the California State Senate. We're in Signal Hill today. My name is Brad Palmer. It's this is Charter Local Edition.